A body washed up in a barrel on the Malibu beach. What investigators are doing now. And we're clearing the shelters all month long. Meet the 16-year-old entrepreneur that's helping pets find their forever homes. You're watching The Rundown. Hello, everyone. I'm Robin Winston. We'll have more on those stories coming up in a moment. But first, tens of thousands of L.A. tenants must now pay back some of the rent they could not pay during the pandemic. Starting August 1st, if you had rental debt accumulated from March of 2020 through September 2021, you now have to pay that unpaid rent in full or possibly face eviction. And this is only the first deadline. Back rent owed from October 2021 through January of this year will be due February 1st, 2024. City officials and tenant advocates are scrambling to offer assistance to those behind on their rent. Because thanks to the new pieces of tenant legislation that we passed at the end of January, Landlords now have to file with LAHD every time they file a notice to evict their tenants. This is new information, information the city never had access to before, but we do now. The city is urging at-risk tenants to schedule an appointment with the city's housing department so officials can go over each case and explore options. After more than a year of cutting back, millions of customers in L.A. can increase their outdoor watering again. LADWP says customers can now water their landscapes up to three days per week. Thanks to our winter storms and water conservation, the utility company says it's exceeded its water conservation goals. For the past 13 months, people had been limited to just two days of outdoor watering per week. Some notable changes in your forecast. Meteorologist Belen De Leon is here tracking unsettled weather and a cool down. Hi everyone, we've got one more day of monsoon moisture and then another pattern change. On Tuesday, a cloudy and muggy forecast with scattered showers and thunderstorms. But by Wednesday, the weather starts to dry out, the sunshine returns, and over the rest of the week, the weather gets warmer. It's gonna get hot again this weekend. You've been warmed. This area of high pressure over the four corners is the reason why we've had this monsoon moisture in our neck of the woods lately. But by the end of the week, we're gonna be cut off from that humidity the weather will be drier, but that also means that it's going to be heating up. Look at the trend in Moreno Valley. The temperatures at or below normal for this time of year all the way through Friday in the low to mid 90s. But over the weekend, time to turn up the AC again. We're going to have temperatures back in the triple digits. A mystery is deepening in Malibu. A body washed up on the beach inside a barrel. Then investigators found something that prompted them to return to the scene later that day. The 55 gallon drum washed up in Malibu Lagoon State Beach Monday morning. A lifeguard pulled the barrel to shore and found a naked man dead inside. The possibility that the container could have come in from the ocean and then got stuck in the lagoon, but we don't know for sure. The Sheriff's Department returned to the beach with a backhoe and began digging in the sand between the lagoon and the ocean. Sources tell NBC4 evidence found inside the barrel prompted the dig. The Sheriff's Department did not release any further details regarding the man's cause of death. There was a police shootout on a residential street in Whittier near several apartment buildings. An officer and a suspect both injured. Officers say they were following a murder suspect, 25-year-old Edgar Gonzalez. They tried pulling him over on Pickering Avenue. Officers say Gonzalez got out of his car, ran away. The shootout happened moments later. Whittier's mayor says the suspect is in custody and the officer is in the hospital and in good spirits. And in the IE, police are searching for the thieves behind a smash and grab burglary at a jewelry store inside the Ontario Mills Mall. This happened over the weekend. In the surveillance video, you can actually see several people appearing to grab some merchandise and then take off. Police say some customers at the mall believe that the sound of the glass shattering was a shooting. So far, no one has been arrested. People who have been parking their RVs near the wetlands that border Playa Vista and Playa del Rey are now being told to clear out. Sanitation crews from the city of L.A. will be at the Bayona Wetlands Ecological Reserve every Wednesday to restore the area. Council member Tracy Park says illegal dumping and pollution in the area has created an unsafe environment. But for those living out there, they say they have nowhere else to go. I live out here because I pay my daughter's rent and I'm on SSI, so I can't afford to live anywhere else. So far, we've had about 25 vehicles leave the area. Um, we have a number more to go. So now everyone 
that had an RV, it lost their RV and they're gonna have to live in a tent. So I don't know how that makes anything any better. The work to restore the reserve will continue throughout the month of August. Afterwards, the city plans to enforce the no parking zone. A driver's license in your wallet may soon become a thing of the past. It may move to your phone instead. The DMV is testing an app that will allow Californians to upload their license to their phones. About 2,000 people are currently testing this out. Several other states already have digital cards, including Arizona, Colorado, and Hawaii. The TSA is one of the agencies working with DMVs on this program. LAX and about two dozen other airports accept the mobile driver's license. License. New details now for the thousands of Swifties here in Southern California. If you have your tickets to one of Taylor's uh, so six sold out shows at SoFi Stadium, that's only part of the equation. It turns out parking is selling out too. It's going to be tough, folks. SoFi says on site parking is gone for the shows coming up on Thursday. Friday, Saturday, and Monday. My goodness, spots are still available for next Tuesday and Wednesday's concerts, but they are filling up fast, so don't forget to reserve your spot. If you miss out on the SoFi lots, there are other options. Parking is available at the nearby Kia Forum, as well as several other parking lots a number of blocks away from the stadium, and in some cases, shuttles are available, but in others, you'll going to have to walk, you know, get a little exercise in there. Make sure you plan ahead. You can check out SoFi Stadium's Twitter page for help. Prices range anywhere from 45 bucks to $375. Keep in mind that Metro is also expanding bus and train service. So that's an option for you too. Taco Bell is the target of a lawsuit. A man from New York is actually suing the Irvine based chain for what he calls false advertising. The man claims many of the food items Taco Bell serves do not match the way they're featured in commercials and other ads. So these are side by side photographs of a commercial quality Mexican pizza. Take a look. And one he says he received from a Taco Bell restaurant. Well, the plaintiff is seeking class action status, hoping to involve other disappointed Taco Bell customers. Well, this year, Santa is going on a summer tour and he's getting a little help. Check this out. You're looking at 25 tons of donated toys piled up at Harry Houdini Estate in Laurel Canyon, the estate which is helping host Santa's summer tour, put out the call for volunteers. They're out there working hard. And on Monday, the LAPD came in to load up the cars. Yeah. LAPD has been arriving all day, loading up trucks with boxes of toys and games. And that all gets distributed tomorrow night at National Night Outs across the city. Groups from LA, USD, and the fire department will also come by this week to pick up toys, which will all be distributed at different events all summer long. And I think this is so awesome, very, very nice. And shout out to all the volunteers and the people that are out there making that happen and working together. You're putting a smile on a lot of faces. We appreciate you. All right, it's August, so that means it's time for Clear the Shelters, NBC Universal's local nationwide uh, pet adoption and donation drive now in its ninth year, and it helps adopt close to 900,000 animals and raise over $500,000 for needy shelters. So meet the inspirational teen entrepreneur who became this year's ambassador for the campaign. Hello, my name is Sir Darius Brown. I'm 16 years old. I'm from North New Jersey, and I am the CEO and founder of Bows and Paws. I've brought in some donations. Excellent. And I've brought in some bow ties. Excellent. Will you help us put them on some animals so we can get some of our kids adopted? Of course. Bows and Paws is a company where I handcraft bow ties for dogs, cats, to help look more noticeable and adoptable and find their forever loving homes. I believe a bow tie, it's a symbol. It gives a form of importance. It's gonna attract people to wanna to adopt a dog or a cat. Every single bow tie that I make, it's personal. When it's handmade, it creates that bond. When growing up, I had certain speech and comprehension problems, even like five motor skills delays, and I feel like within this initiative, I was able to overcome it. I learned how to sew from my sister, my mom and my sister. They are very proud of me. If it wasn't for them, this initiative wouldn't have become close to possible. Some accomplishments that I was able to achieve, I was able to donate over 5,000 bow ties. I was able to help raise for animal shelters over $300,000, and I was even able to receive a letter from former President Barack Obama. 
I created this bow tie for Clitter Shelter because not only is it really cute, but I wanted to spread the word. I'm really excited to be working with Clitter Shelters because we're going to be clearing out shelters and all the dogs and cats are going to find a home and it's just going to make us feel better as people. <laughs> Ah, uh, so many fur babies waiting for forever homes, and we love those ties. You can go to cleartheshelter.com for more information about Sir Darius's tie as well as the month-long campaign. We know many people are excited about the new movie Barbie, but when a young Barbie fan couldn't go to the movies, her nurses decided to bring Barbie to her. Ashley Gomez is a cerebral palsy patient at Cedar sinai Garen Children's Hospital. Because of her treatments, she could not go to a Barbie screening. So the nurses decided to turn her hospital room into Barbie land with an all pink Barbie themed wall full of streamers and balloons. I love it. Ashley loves everything in pink and all things Barbie, so much so her nurses actually gave her the nickname, their pink princess. Ashley's mom says she's grateful for the nurses who went above and beyond to put a smile on Ashley's face during her difficult medical journey. Look at that smile, she loves it. For other patients who can leave the hospital for a few hours, they got a special treat. These young ladies are battling cancer or waiting for kidney transplants, but they got their minds off painful treatments on one afternoon, and they made a special trip to the Barbie Dream House hosted by Ken. Officials say the smiles were endless during the special tour. They had a lot of fun out there, I can tell. We can see the smiles on those faces. You can always get news and weather updates on the NBCLA app and our website, NBCLA.com. And be sure to tune into Today in LA on NBC4 weekdays, 4 to 7 a.m. I'll be helping you get around with the traffic reports throughout your morning commute. We'll see you next time on The Rundown.